can see Prochata? Okay. And then uh, today, very important. So today we, I hope, will be able to sort off a very important question for Buddhists and also uh, the most important teachings uh, which is uh, different from other religions. We call it a nada, non-self, non-self. So today I will try to explain uh, uh, the importance of anatta. You know, after the Buddha, after Buddha preached the first sermon, so a group of five men, they became Sotapanna, uh, street mentora. Then the Buddha preached the second sermon that is called Anatta Lakana Soda. The discourse is on non-self. So after, after learning, after listening, second discourse, so all, all the men, a group of five men, they became a rahan. So without understanding anatta or non-self, you cannot become a rahan. So I think that is very important. Uh, as a Buddhist, this is a, a higher, uh, higher teachings, also a very important teachings in Buddhism. So because of this anatta teachings, uh, non-self theory, so the Buddhism uh, became different from other religions. So anatta or non-self is a, uh, uh, how do you say that? It is the opposite of theory or self. The opposite of theory or self. Actually, previous week, I already sent out uh, Maha Tanangaya Soda, uh, the greater discourse on distraction or craving. Majjama Nikaya, Soda number 38. So in that Soda, a bhikkhu called Sati, he have a wrong view. And so he, he actually he, he, he think that as I understand the Dharma taught by the Blessed One, so it is this discourse, sorry, it, uh, it is this same consciousness in Bali, Vijnana, that runs and wanders through the rounds of rebirth, not another. It is the same consciousness, the same consciousness that ran around samsara. If you die, the same consciousness moves to another life. So that is theory or so. There is a permanent entity. So if you die, so you will let your body, that soul, whatever, wh whatever language you call it, so a permanent entity moved to another, another life. So that is, we call it trans transmigration, right? Transmigrations. So the soul moved to another life, another life. So Bhikkhu Sati also, uh, he believed that there must be a permanent entity, it's called soul. Actually, according to him, he used the word consciousness or vijnana. So the Buddha also used the word vijnana. And he believed that this same consciousness, vijnana, that runs, wander through the wrongs of rebirth. If you die this life, your body will remain. Then that consciousness will move to another life. So that consciousness will not die. It's everlasting. We, we can call it theory or soul. In many religions, most of the religions, uh, I think that apart from Buddhism, they believe a form of soul theory. So they believe that 
there must be a permanent entity in their body, especially in Hinduism. They believe that uh, there is a soul or Atman. So when we die, our body left behind. So that soul will move on until that soul reunite with super soul. So that is the theory of Hinduism. So actually, uh, this is very clear. Actually, the Bhikkhu Sati is the same as Brahmanism. So he believed that the same consciousness moved to uh, next life. Many people, uh, sorry, many, many men trying to change his mind. So the Buddha has talking, the Buddha has talking that uh, the consciousness arises depending on a condition, a condition. So the Buddha many times stated that. So if you, if you say that the same consciousness move to another life, that is a punisher view. So Bhikkhu Sati didn't listen to them. So the man informed to the Buddha. And the Buddha investigate. And the Buddha said that, uh, the Buddha taught to uh, Bhikkhu Sati, what is that consciousness Sati? What do you mean by consciousness? So actually, the Buddha also used the word consciousness. And the Buddha trying to investigate Bhikkhu Sati, what do you mean by consciousness? And Bhikkhu Sati said that, Venerable Sir, it is that which speaks and feeds and experience here and there. The result of good and bad actions. So actually, which speaks, feeds and experience here and there, the result of good and bad actions. So according to him, there is a consciousness that speaks, that feeds and that experience. There is a passing that belongs to consciousness. Because of that, because of that consciousness, which is everlasting, because of that consciousness, so we are speaking, we feel, we experience. So that is the, uh, what the Bhikkhu Sadi said. And the Buddha said that, misguided man, Moka Buddhism, this is a very strong one. Even the Buddha, sometimes the Buddha used a very strong word. The reason is, actually, I think that the Buddha went to highlight the importance of uh, Pandisha view. So as Bhikkhu Sadi believe a wrong view, so this is very dangerous for Buddhism, for his, pup uh, for his disciples. So if uh, his disciples follow Bhikkhu Sadi, it is too dangerous. So actually, this is the uh, the opposite of anatta, the opposite of non self. So Buddhism is, so in, in the second sermon, so the Buddha preach non self or anatta because it's very important. Without understanding anatta or non self, one, become, one, one cannot become arahant, one cannot attain enlightenment. So, of course, as a normal Buddhist, if you do not understand anatta, if you do not believe anatta, it stay okay, but you will go around samsara. <laughs> but if you want to stop this whole mass of suffering, samsara, so you have to understand anatta, anatta discourse, anatta desana. But here, the Buddha used the word, very strong word, misguided man. To, to when he, he went to highlight the importance of the case. To who have you ever known me to teach the Dharma in that way? Misguided man, have I not stated in many ways consciousness to be dependently arising? That is very important. Consciousness to be dependently arising. Since without a condition, there is no Originate your consciousness. Consciousness arises because of our uh, gamma formation. 
uh, volition formation. So volition formation is a condition. Without condition, there will be no consciousness. Actually, in previous week, we have learned that if consciousness arises dependent on I, that is called I consciousness. If consciousness arises dependent on ear, it's called ear consciousness. If consciousness arises dependent on the mind, mind consciousness. So actually, the Buddha said that consciousness to be dependently arisen. Without condition, there's no original consciousness. But you misguided men have misinterpreted as by wrong grabs and injure yourself and store up much demerit. For this will lead to your harm and suffering for a long time. So this is a, the Buddha used the word very strong word, store up much demerit. So actually, having a uh, theory, uh, theory of soul is very dangerous, it's pernicious. For that reason, the Buddha used the word strong word. The Buddha, the Buddha said in that soda, because consciousness is reckoned by the particular conditions dependent upon which it arises. When consciousness arises, depending on the I, and forms, it is reckoned as unconsciousness. If consciousness arises, depending on ear and the sound, it is called ear consciousness. So actually we have a six pigs, six internal and six external pigs. So uh, I think this teaching is very important. Later I think it will be clear to you. For that reason, so when we are talking about uh, second link, uh, depending on uh, the volitional formation as conditions, uh, consciousness arises. But of course, if you are using revert linking consciousness, we can also use revert linking consciousness. But for other time, so suppose I see something then consciousness arises. That cannot be called rebelling in consciousness. That is called unconsciousness. That I hear a consciousness arises. That is called ear consciousness. So here we can call consciousness depending on which it arises. So uh, that is very important to understand. Mostly, um, mostly uh, the commentators, especially uh, Wisori Maga, use consciousness as a rebirth linking. Actually, it is just a model, just a model, just a model. Then after learning, uh, with, uh, when Wisori Maga con make a conclusion, final conclusion, it will be clear. Uh, it just used just for the explanation model. But here, uh, the Buddha said that uh, consciousness is reckoned by the particular condition depending upon which it arises. Actually, many of you know that for those who have been learning Abhidharma, you know that I have been explaining this one for many times. But this is for the new students. So when we are talking about where does our mind come from, I use this, uh, I want to say this picture. So actually, uh, this is a, a contemporary, a contemporary uh, I want to say the pictures. <coughs> so when you see this one, when you play the guitar, the sound arises. Where does the sound come from? Is it in the guitar? No. It is in the hand that play? No. It is in, in the sp uh, between the, in, in the space? No. Actually, the sound arises depending on many conditions. 
we have a guitar and someone is playing. So because of those conditions, the song arises. The song is not in the guitar. It's a very, very good simile. So the reason is we use this one uh, based on Wizardy Mega explanation. And Wizardy Mega, the chapter 80, paragraph number 30, 33, uh, it explains where does our mind come from. Actually, you must understand this one, otherwise, you were not, you were confused theory or so. So now we are, we are talking about the origin of the mind. Where does our mind come from? Using uh, Wizardy Mega, Wizardy Mega simile. And Wizardy Mega said that the sound exists neither in the drum nor in the hand. Actually, Wizardy Mega used the word drum. So when you beat the drum, the sound come from. So Wizardy Mega said that the sound exists neither in the drum nor in the hand. It also does not exist in the space between these two. It comes into be the sound comes into being due to the causes, the drum, the hand, and the beating. Actually, very beautiful simile. When someone is beating the drum, the sound does not exist in the drum, or the sound does not come from the hand, and the sound does not exist in the space between these two as well. Just like that, uh, my exists neither in the eye nor in the visible objects. So when, when I see something, the consciousness, we call it the mind, arises. The mind does not exist in the eye. The mind does not exist in the form. But the mind does not exist. It is also does not exist in the space between these two. I and form. The mind does not exist. It comes into being due to the causes. I have I and something to see. Then I have awareness. So these are the causes. So the mind arises depending on causes. So that is, so we can understand that consciousness or mental factor or the mind does not exist in our body, does not exist in our brain, does not exist anywhere else. It arises depending on conditions. I have I, then visible object, then I have awareness, there's a contact. Because of contact, mind arises, the consciousness arises. So, if we understand this uh, important teachings, important teachings, so we can fully understand theory or non theory or so theory, so theory, theory or anatta, theory or anatta. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have learned in the Chachaka Soda, depending on eyes and forms, unconsciousness arises. The meeting of three is contact. Depending on contact, feeling arises. Depending on feeling, creeping arises. So that is a dependent origination. Actually, the consciousness does not exist anywhere. It depends on conditions, consciousness arises. I, the form. So according to Bodhisattva, the mind does not exist anywhere. In the brain, the mind is not the brain. The brain is not the mind. For that reason, even though some people have a brain death, this is the vibe if the heart is beating. So the brain is not the mind. And the mind does not exist in the heart as well. It arises because of conditions. So for that reason, the Bora very often point out that if the mind, if 
the consciousness arises depend on I, it is called unconsciousness. If consciousness arises depend on the mind, it's called mind consciousness. So based on consciousness, contact, feeling, craving, etc. arises. So that is the dependent origination. So learning and understanding dependent origination is very important. So if you understand dependent originations, so you will clearly see what the Buddha said regarding with uh, there's no soul, there's no Atman, there's no creator God. So everything arises dependent on causes. Nobody is created. So that's very important. Another important one regarding with the uh, uh, so theory is the emptiness or blindness. We call it sonyata. Mahayana, they use the word emptiness, a very beautiful term. So also in Tidavara, we also have theory of emptiness. So what, um, what it means? Actually, according to Bodhisattva, we also, uh, we, we also have a lot of uh, a lot of discourses regarding with the emptiness. <coughs> so here I got two sodas, Fena uh, Penduba Soda and Sonyata Loka Soda. So according to these two discourses, so the Buddha used the word Sonyata, emptiness or blindness, so that me lack of permanent entity or soul or cell or whatever you call it, whatever name you call it. So the permanent, there is no permanent entity. In the five aggregates or six internal and six external pieces. Better talk is free. <laughs> <coughs> so actually, in uh, Tetavara also, in Tetavara Palikan, and there are many discourses that talk about Sonyata. But here I will quote two sodas. So according to these two, two sodas, uh, so emptiness, emptiness me, uh, there is no permanent entity in the five aggregates, in the six pieces. So that is called emptiness. So uh, normally we call five aggregate and six pieces as a, the world or the passing or the things. So actually when you analyze yourself or when you, when you analyze a passing, the bidding, any, anything, so we have only five aggregates. In other words, we can analyze in terms of six pieces, six pieces. So there's nothing. So we conventionally call as the passing or the bidding or the world, etc. So these are conventional terms. So in ultimate realities, there's only five aggregates or six pieces. So according to two sodas, uh, Painak Fedubama Soda and Sonyata Logan Soda. So, uh, so emptiness, emptiness means lack of permanent entity or lack of soul. So actually, uh, many religions, they believe that there is a permanent, permanent entity in our body. So uh, that permanent entity moved to another life. So according to Buddhism, there's no such a thing as a permanent entity. Everything arises depending on conditions. Consciousness, mental factor, or form, anything arises depending on conditions. Arises, passes away, arises and passes away. So that is called emptiness. So when you're talking about our mind, it will arise, uh, it will 
disappear. There's nothing permanent entity. That is called emptiness, according to Tidapada discourses. Actually, um, <clears throat> I didn't send out uh, the first sutta. So the, the first sutta mentioned beautifully regarding with the fire aggregate, regarding with the fire aggregate, um, using a beautiful simile. <clears throat> it's called Fena Pendubama Soda, a lamp form. And I will write. So in this sota, so the Buddha used uh, a lot of simile to explain about emptiness. Actually, um, <clears throat> if you understand the emptiness or discourses on emptiness, you understand soul theory. In Buddhism, there's no soul. There's no such a permanent entity in Buddhism. Everything arises because of conditions. Everything is impermanent. So that is, uh, there's no permanent entity or essential soul. For that reason, it is called empty. So in this sutta, the Buddha said that, uh, keeping a lot of simile, and the Buddha, uh, the Buddha said that, suppose, uh, Ganji River is carrying along a great lamp form. And the Buddha said that in that a great lamp form, we cannot, if somebody inspect and anal investigate carefully, there is no permanent entity. That, that, that is emptiness. Just like that, if somebody investigate and analyze the form, our rupa, there is no permanent entity. Everything arises and passes away. Even the science, they can see impermanent nature of the body. So when they analyze with the powerful microscope, they can see impermanent nature of the body. Everything arises and passes away. A new cell replaced. So, in that soda, the Buddha actually in 2,600 years ago, the Buddha said that, you know, a lamp of form. If, somebody, and if you see from very far place, so you can see as a form. But if you go, go a nearer place and analyze, there's no permanent entity. Just like that, our form is emptiness. But here, emptiness means uh, arises and passes away, no permanent entity. There's no soul, no soul. In the second simile, the Buddha gave a water burden, a water burden. So the Buddha said that uh, in the autumn, when it is raining, and big raindrops are falling, a water burden arises and passes on the surface of the water. And somebody go near a place and investigate. When, when somebody look at a water bubble and he see nothing permanent entity, emptiness, it is emptiness. So just like that, so when we analyze our feeling, the arises and passes away. Feeling is not permanent things. Sometimes we are happy, uh, a pleasant feeling, sometimes unpleasant feeling, the arises and passes away, arises and passes away. So that is emptiness. So here emptiness means no permanent entity. Actually many religions, they believe that there is essential soul, a permanent entity in their body, in their mind. In Buddhism, nothing 
is permanent. It arises and passes away. Emptiness. Emptiness here me. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, mind does not exist. It doesn't mean the form does not exist. It means they arise as and pass away. There's n they are not permanent entity. For that reason, it is called emptiness or sonyata. In another, in another simile, the Buddha used the word a shimmering mirage. Shimmering mirage. So the Buddha said that uh, in the last man thought the hot season, at the high noon, a shimmering mirage appears. So when we see a mirage from a very far place, it looks like a form, a rear. But when you go nearer, nothing. Emptiness. So just like that, the Buddha said that we have a perception. Perception does not exist forever. It arises and passes away, arises and passes away. Emptiness, emptiness, non-self. In regarding with the volition of formation, Sankara, the Buddha gave a very beautiful simile, a simile of a trunk of a large plantain tree or banana tree. So someone who went to find a hardwood and go in the forest and cut a banana tree. And he went to, he, he, he enrolled the coin. No? So even though he tried to find a hardwood in the banana trees, at the end, he couldn't find. Just like that, so we have a volition of formations. The Buddha said that. Volition of formations, also emptiness. It arises and passes away. It's not permanent. It's not permanent. And regarding with the consciousness, and the Buddha gave a simile of a magic illusion. A magician, the Buddha said that, a magician or a magician apprentice will display a magic illusion at a crossroad. Someone who have a good eye, insight, and carefully look at his magic illusion. But at the end, he find out that that is just illusion, not real. Huh? So just like that, consciousness arises, passes away. They do not, they do not, uh, uh, they do not, how to say, last forever. They are not permanent. So they are, they are not everlasting. It rises and passes away. So I think that is very important. So for that reason, we are meditating. The reason is to see how the mind and our body is walking. So things as they really are. The mind or consciousness arises and passes away. If you see that nature of the consciousness or the nature of your body, you will not cling to your body. You will not cling to your mind. If there's no clinging, there's no problem. So that is the aim of, the higher aim of his teaching. So I think uh, a very beautiful soda, Fena Pendubama Soda. <coughs> For those, uh, actually I didn't uh, send out this soda, so you can, you can read um, uh, soda number, Sounda Nikaya, chapter 22, Soda number 95. Chapter 22 is a aggregate. So the Buddha, uh, the Buddha uh, preached in many discourses about aggregate. So now I will quote another soda, Sonyata Loka Soda. <coughs> but here I think, uh, so in two soda, the Buddha talk about emptiness in the five aggregate and in the six internal and external basis. Normally we call it the passing or the bidding. So if you analyze the passing, it consists of just five aggregate. It consists of just six basis. There's nothing. So they arise and pass away. There's no permanent entity. So 
that is called emptiness. So in this soda, the Buddha said that uh, it is ananda because it is empty of self or of what belongs to self. That is said, empty is the world. But here, the world in this soda means six internal and external pieces. In uh, uh, chapter 22, Sandra Nikaya, so Kanda Sanyoda, the Buddha, the Buddha referred to five aggregate as the world. But here, this is a Salayatana. Let's talk about six peaks. So the Buddha referred to six space as the world. The world. So here, the world me empty. Empty me so nyata. So nyan ate nawa ate nawa. So your logo, empty is the world. But here, empty me, there's no permanent entity. There is no soul or cell or any language you call it. You know, Bhikkhu uh, Sari, he used the word consciousness or vinyana. Or if you use the word mind, mind exists forever. That is theory or soul. That is theory or soul. <coughs> There is no such a thing that exists forever. Arises and passes away. Arises and passes away. Question? Okay, go ahead. Microphone? Hear me, uh? Can you hear me? Yeah, can. But I have a question. It's um, um it's a very practical question. Um, uh, I think I understand what you've said in theory. In theory, but when I think about perception, perception. Yes, perception is like the memory stick in my mind. You know, the com your computer, the memory, it stores your memory. Um, um, Is there any, any microphone? The only one, right? Hello. Not very clear. Never mind. I'll okay, now. okay, and then it will be recorded. Okay. okay. I'll continue. Um, uh, based on my own, own experience, um, perception seems to be quite strong in my mind. Um, like, for example, sometimes I, once I was meditating, anyway, I'm a very poor meditator, <laughs> so once I was meditating, I saw an image. You saw? I saw an image, an image, and then I realized that, yes, I did see this image in my current life, mm -hmm. um, but um, when I was there at that place, um, okay, how shall I put it? Uh, I saw an image but when I was in the past. Mm. Um, in the so past, me in this life? In this life. Yeah. Okay. I'm not that good. <laughs> I can see previous <laughs> lives. So when I was meditating, I saw an image um, from my past in this current life. And then I realized that, yes, I was there at that place. During my meditation, I realized that, yes, I was there at that place, you know. But when I was at that place, when it happened, I didn't realize it. You know, the perception was just recording everything, and I didn't realize it. You know, but it was when I, only when I was meditating, then that image from the past in this life came up, that I was at that place. And then I realized, yeah, I really was at that place, but I didn't realize myself, you know, paying attention, whatever, you know. So in my mind, perception, the memory stick is very strong. And that is why people, you know, from Pai Art Centre, you know, they're very good at remembering their past lives, you know. And Buddha himself saw his past lives, you see. So to me, at a, from a theoretical level, I can understand. But from a practical level, you know, it's memory is so powerful and so strong, you know. So I just can't, I just find that it's very hard to, um, uh, to see because it's even there and you don't even realize it. The perception is just locked in. Yeah, so my question is, 
um, I find it for myself personally, I find it hard to see how memory, um, how perception, sorry, how perception can see. It's just based on my experience. Okay. That me, uh, you can recall previous memory, which is real. Yes, it was real. I was at mm. that place. Actually, I now see. When I talk in the past, now, in this life. Yeah, actually, now when I talk to you, I can't remember what it was. But at that point when I was meditating, I was very surprised. I saw the image. And then when I look back, yes, I was at that place. But when I was at that place, I couldn't, I didn't even notice. Mm. I didn't even remember being in that place. But we learn from Abhidharma that perception really is there, just recording every single thing. You see, and we don't even realize it. See, it's yeah. true. So that perception was so strong, and it, it's still, and can you imagine how many more perceptions we have in our mind yeah. that we don't realize of, and that even people in past can even see past lives, you know, so many hundreds of years ago. Uh, actually, we call it not perception, just the mind. The current mind can recall our previous life or our previous actions. Actually, in many soda, it's called fire aggregate. Then, when when our concentration is very strong, so we can recall fire aggregate in the past. So, in the past, me it depends on our degree of concentrations. So we can see uh, even even the past life memories or past life fire aggregate. So I I I uh, and then uh, you want to uh, you want to know how it relates to current uh, current life and previous life. Uh, I uh, I just um, okay my question is um, perception of all the Aggregates. Mm, yeah. Um, I agree, yeah, volition, sankara, you know, arises and ends, you know, just yeah. you get angry, just can get angry if someone let it takes away, you know. Uh, but perception mm. is very powerful nowadays. Yeah. So I, even for many lifetimes, I think the perception will still be there. So, so you mean uh, the mind? And form exists in the past, still exists. Yeah, perception, um, um, perception doesn't cease so easily. Ah, it mm. doesn't cease so easily. But that's just my view, my experience, and I may be wrong. It may not even be perception. It may be just a memory, like you said, probably. That's you mean there must be certain kinds of permanent entity in the past? Uh, no. Um, mm. remember something from the past yeah. that I went to this place and when I was there at that time I didn't even realize remembering this place. You see, so something recorded it. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Actually we have a lot of memories. So a lot of how to say uh, our, we have a lot of life in the past. If our mind inclined to those experiences, we can recall it. But actually, it is not a... Uh, actually, I, 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 think, uh, I, I don't think you, you, you question about soul. No, okay, okay. I think as you said, maybe it's memory, it's not perception. I think it's memory. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Consciousness that over the life of the million and trillions of consciousness. Yeah. Then how, because of the arising and falling, arising, there's no permanent physical life in it. Yeah. Then how does one person able to recall there's no permanent entity? They're able to recall first life consciousness. This is sixth life consciousness. We don't have, we don't talk about permanent. Yeah. Actually, here, permanent me, they do not exist forever. They arise and pass away. 
But when you recall right now, then you can see uh, traces of consciousness. And they also arise and pass away. They, are, they do not exist. But when you recall uh, what have been the past, you can see and you can recall uh, what you have been in the past. They do not exist in the past. But you can recall them. You can recall them. Okay? Okay, and then uh, I will explain uh, what is mentioned in Melinda Panya. I think you, you will understand a little bit. So based on Melinda Panya. So in this order, actually what the Buddha want to say is um, the five aggregate and other the six peaks, they are empty. So empty me, they do not exist forever. So if someone arises and passes away, another one replaces. That one also will pass away. So that is a, actually uh, what, what we have learned in the Abhidhamma. The consciousness arises and passes away. Another consciousness replaces. So the mind is going in such a way. But when you have concentrations, we can, you can recall what you have been in the past. Okay? Regarding with the soul theory, uh, actually, many of you have learned and uh, know that Bhagavad Gita in the Hinduism, in the very famous uh, text, it said that uh, as the embodied soul continuously passed, in this body, from by hope to youth and to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. So actually, it said that uh, if someone die, the body remain, uh, the more left behind, and the soul will continue to another life. That, is, that we call it transmigration. So that is, uh, Bhagavad Gita said that, a sober passing or a white passing is not be wind up by such change. So they also uh, understand they will die and they will take another, another life. But according to them, uh, the soul will not die. The soul lasts forever. It will move to another life. Uh, it will get new body. So that is Bhagavad Gita said that. So I think this is a uh, what the Bhagavad Gita said that they call it Atman. Actually, when they uh, when they use English, they use in a say or so, and you can see this one. Then someone die, the soul move to another body, and it will have a uh, stages of life. At the end, they will die, and the new soul will take. Uh, new life again. So in this way, so during the sansara, they have to purify their soul. Purify means they have to do good deed. If their soul is 100% one one pure, so their soul will reunite with the super soul, Mahatman, super soul. So that is uh, according to Hinduism. So that view can be found in Buddhism as well, uh, at the time of the Buddha as well. So we, uh, in Sapa Savasoda, the Buddha talk about different type of round views. So this is a, another type of round view. And the Buddha said, he has some such a view as this. It is this cell of mine that speaks, feeds, and experience here and there. The result, uh, the result of good and bad actions. But this cell of mind is permanent, everlasting, eternal, not subject to change. And it will endure as long as entity. So actually, this is the soul theory. We call it soul theory. So it is a, similar to many religions. 
So actually, uh, the Buddha said that this is a vanisha views. So the conscious, there's no permanent entity. Consciousness arises and passes away. So I think uh, to, exp uh, to explain your questions, I think this will help you, I think. Neither the say nor another. Neither the say nor another. This, that we call it nasa so nasa enyo. <clears throat> so when Bodhisattva answer, uh, the commentator want to answer the theory or so theory, they use this one. So according to uh, according to uh, people from other religions, especially Hinduism, they believe that uh, uh, there must be a soul or a person who speaks, who feels, and who experiences. If there is no person, if there is no permanent soul, who speaks, who is speaking, who is feeling, and who is experiencing good and bad feeling, there must be a person. Actually, uh, as a uh, normal Buddhist, we also believe that I exist, you exist. That is according to normal Buddhist. Actually, uh, in higher teachings, there's no I, there's no you. Only mental and physical phenomena arise and pass away. There's no person who's, who is speaking. There's no person who is feeling and who is experiencing good and bad feeling. So to explain those ones, especially transmigration. So Milinda Panya explained in this way. Kim Milinda asked the question to Venerable, uh, Venerable Nagasena. He who is born, Nagasena, does he remain the same or become another? Who is born? Who is born? So actually we were born in this life. Is it the same consciousness, the same person that born in previous life? And the life, our life in the past and the, uh, in this life is the same person or different person? Kim Milena asked the question. We call it is a two hon question. <laughs> There's a two hon, right? Then Venerable Nagasena said, neither the same nor another. We cannot say the same and we cannot say different. Neither the say nor another. And the king said that it's not clear to him. So he, uh, he, he asked to explain further. The Venerable Nagasena said that it is like a milk, which when once taken from the cow, turns after a leopard time, first to cars, then from car to batter, and then from better to ghee. The milk turned to cart and better and ghee. And he said that now, will it be right to say that the milk was the same thing as the cart or the better or the ghee? Now, the milk changed to cart, better or ghee. Can you say that they are the same? Not the same. Can you say that they are different? They are not the same? Sorry, are they different? <laughs> the king said, certainly not, but they are produced out of it. So that means the better and the make, they are not the same. But they are not another, you know? Actually, the batter is produced out of milk. So you cannot say that they are the same, but they are different, right? But you cannot say that they are another. Then Benjamin Nagasena said that just so all kings is the continu continual a passing or things maintained. One comes into being, another passes away, and the rebirth is, it were, 
simultaneous. Thus, neither at the same nor another does a man go onto the left face of his self consciousness. Actually, um, this is a, what Venerable uh, Nagasena said that to make it very simple, if someone dies from this life to next life, they are not the same. But you cannot say that the passing, the new life is another one. No. Because the consciousness in this life passes away and new consciousness in the new life arises. They are not different. The reason is because of consciousness or death consciousness in this life, a rebelling consciousness arises. They are not different. But we, we cannot say that they are the same. They are not the same. Right? They are not the same. So actually using the simile of uh, using the simile of milk, milk and ghee are not the same. But the ghee is produced out of milk. They are not the same, but you cannot say the ghee is another one. You cannot say as another one. So they are linking in one way or another. But here, uh, according to Bodhisattva, we pass away in this life. Uh, we call it death consciousness. And you was born in another life. And the first my moment is called uh, rebelling in consciousness. So death consciousness and rebelling in consciousness, they are not the same, right? They are not the same. And the king said that, Okay, where put Nagasena? I want to share something on the uh, yeah. uh, Bhante, the analogy that, that you spoke about uh, the milk and the curd and the butter in real life, in law, if you sell cement, and send to a developer. Okay. You build a house. Mm. And then your goods are not being paid. Can you claim it back that no, my sand is there, my concrete, my, my cement is there, or want to claim on it? Okay, in law, there's such thing called property reservation clause. For example, if I sell a, uh, a TV to you, you did not pay for it, I can claim it back. But because you mix the cement with the sand, become concrete. Mm. There's a concrete or chain of species. The chain of species under the law, you cannot claim it. So is it the cement and the, and the, uh, what, the sand become concrete? Are they the same or they're not the same? So similar analogies over Yeah, yeah, it's it's similar to that. Yeah, mm. similar. But then in reality, the law says you cannot claim. That means another chain of species, you can, neither is the sand is your, neither is your cement. But it became a concrete. And so this is what it meant. Yeah, so whatever example here is, exists in real life. Right. So the thing in local reservation property, uh, provided it doesn't change the speech. When change the speech, you lost, you lost control of it. Okay. Actually, uh, Usori Manga just mentioned just a simile. Simile me the milk and the ghee, they are not the same because they have a different stages. But you cannot say that they are totally different. Just like that, Normally, we are talking about conventional terms. Normally, when we are talking in daily life, we use a lot of conventional terms. I die this life as a person. Then, new life as a person. So we use, uh, we normally use the word conventional term. So, I was born in this life. Is it the same? Uh, actually, suppose I, I come from... Uh, Heavenly realm, suppose, <laughs> as a devas, as a devas, then I was born here. So, is it the same, the devas in my previous life and human being in this life, are they the, are they the same? No, the same. They are different? No. Actually, uh, actually, uh, we sort of Maga just want to mention the continuity of life. But 
uh, normally we use conventional time as a passing. So actually, as a, in Buddhism, there's no as a passing. We die, the less consciousness, and rebirth with the new consciousness. But they are not the same. So new consciousness inherit previous consciousness. If we have done good things, then the consciousness in new life will inherit new good things. So that is what the Wizardry Mark about to mention. So in, uh, in summary, there is no permanent entity like a soul or consciousness or cell or whatever name you call it. There is no permanent soul in Buddhism. They arises and passes away. Even to link to life, even to link to life, that consciousness and passes away and rebirth linking consciousness arises. They are not the same. They are not together, but they have link. That, that is a, the, the simile one to say. Matter of, yeah. But they, it, uh, it came from the same sources. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then the question mm. is the end product. Is it, are you the same or not the same? Yeah. That's the question what you raise here. So in real life, the same thing happened. Sand and cement become concrete. Yeah, you yeah. See? You're, so right, you're right. right. So what is the concrete? Thing, you uh, cannot say that they are, uh, uh, the concrete is the another, you know? Correct. So whatever is thought 2,000 years ago, yeah. even today is still valid. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Thank you. And then King Milena Pahanya, he understood, and he said, where put Nagasena? <laughs> I hope you understand it seemingly. So actually, it's important to understand there's no passing. You, I, man and we, man, they are conventional terms. They do not exist. There's only mind and body in Buddhism. There's no fire, there's a fire aggregate. Other than that, nothing. Actually, here I want to quote uh, uh, Ayakema, my favorite name, the first Western Tedavada Buddhist name, a German bhikkhuni, Ayakema. And he said that. It is often thought that the Buddha's doctrine teaches that suffering will disappear if one has meditated long enough or if one sees everything differently. It is misunderstood in Buddhism if you meditate long enough, suffering will run away. It's not so. It is not that at all. Suffering isn't going to go away, but the person who suffer is going to go away. Very beautiful. So if someone meditate, if someone realize the real nature of his mind or her mind or body, and they will not see as a person. They, uh, in their mind, there's no identity view. We call it psychiatry. As I, there's no I, there's no you. Just uh, mental and physical phenomena arises. So actually it is a, what, the, uh, what the Buddha want to say. There's no person. There's no person. So here also, actually I cannot show <laughs> Prajara is very... So it is a uh, uh, can you see my casa? Can see, right? There is suffering, but none who suffers. Suffering will be there. But normally, we have identity view. I suffer. Someone criticize you. He is criticizing me. He is insulting me like this. We have an identity view. We identify our say as I. That is very dangerous. Because of that, a lot of defilements arises. Suppose um, your boss is, uh, uh, how do you say, blaming you. If you identify your body, your mind as I, then you will feel angry. 
for those who have been meditating, they do not have any idea or identity view, and they just see, they just understand blaming, right? Blaming, that's all. Though there's no identity view, there's no anger at all. So here, and she said that uh, for those who have been meditating for a long time, suffering will be stay there. But they do not have identity view. Someone who is suffering, I is suffering. That is the theory of non-self. Theory of non-self. Actually, uh, what the air came is say is uh, relevant according to Wizzori Maga. And Wizzori Maga said that uh, for there is no suffering but none who suffers. So there is no part, uh, there is no one who is suffering but only suffering. Suppose so when you have a painful feeling, just a painful feeling, but you take it as I am painful. I am, that is, you identify yourself as I am. But of course, the Buddha also used the word I am teaching, the Dharma. But the Buddha just used conventional terms. But in his mind, there's no the concept of I. <clears throat> doing is this, although there's no doer, there's no doer, just doing. So there's no passing and borders in. Just five aggregate arises. Just five, uh, just six business arises. Extinction is, but no extinguished passing. If someone died, the passing, there's no passing who died, only death or extinction. Although there is a path, there is no do, no, no goal. So actually here, uh, it is important to understand these uh, higher teachings. We are meditating. The reason is to see non-self. Uh, to see non-self. Not to identify ourselves as I. Not to identify others as, as a person. Just to see phenomena alone flow alone. So here, there is no doer but the deed or one who read the good deed reset, phenomena alone flow on. No other view then, this is a right. So here, phenomena alone flow on. Here, phenomena me, mental and physical phenomena. In other words, we can see the five aggregate, or six basis. Just five aggregate. So when you meditate seriously, uh, following instruction of the Bora, and you will see that there's no passing at all. Just mental and phenomena, mental and physical phenomena arises and passes away. So if you have such understanding, that is called enlightenment. If you have such enlightenment, there is no place for Lobadosa Moha, the intact Lobadosa Moha. So actually, uh, that is very important to understand. So for that reason, uh, dependent origination is important for that. Understanding uh, there is no person. Just because of ignorance, volitional formation arises. Because of volitional formations, uh, the consciousness arises, etc. So in these teachings, there is no person. Just phenomena flow on. For that reason, uh, Wizuri Maga, at the end of um, explanation or dependent origination, he said that no God, no Brahma can be formed. Creator of Sansara realm, empty phenomena roll on. Here, empty me, uh, no permanent entity arises and passes away. Impermanent nature of the uh, phenomena. Subject to cause and condition. So actually, uh, phenomena arises because of conditions. Volitional formation arises because of ignorance. Consciousness arises because of volitional formations. There's no passing. 
there's no you, there's no I. Actually, this is very deep, very deep. I think uh, to understand this one, I think we should um, uh, we should study Satipatthana Soda. So here, the aim of Satipatthana is to see another. So the aim of Satipatthana is to see another through the impermanent nature of body, feeling, mind, and phenomena. Satipatthana Soda talk about four foundations of mindfulness. So you can establish your mindfulness based on four foundations. Body, feeling, mind, and phenomena. Based on those foundations, you can establish your mindfulness. So the aim of establishing mindfulness or the aim of meditation, in other words, we can call it, the aim of meditation is to see another. There's no soul or there's no self that exists forever, that less permanent. So if you uh, actually uh, by looking at uh, uh, Satipatthana Sota, Parat number five, Parat number six, etc., I think uh, you will understand the, uh, the purpose of establishing mindfulness. I think uh, that is connected with the theory of theory or soul. So if you meditate, you will understand that uh, the body, the mind, feeling, phenomena arises. There's no person, there's no doer, there's no creator. Then I think uh, I will read out a little bit of Satipatthana Soda. I think uh, Satipatthana Soda, I think many of you know that, Satipatthana Soda talk about to establish mindfulness based on four foundations, based on the body, based on feeling, based on the mind and phenomena. So, according to paragraph, followed by each object of meditation. Object of meditation means the body is object of your meditation. Breathing is your object of meditation. Your feeling, your mind, and phenomena. So at the end of uh, each object of meditation, uh, we can see that the aim of another meditation or the aim of establishing mindfulness. So I'm going to read out a little uh, one, part number one. In Satipatthana Soda, the Buddha talk about mindfulness of breathing, and you meditate on the breathing. So after talking about breathing meditation, and the Buddha said that, so in this way, he abides contemplating the body as a body. You take it breathing as a breathing. You do not take it, you are breathing. If you think that you are breathing, that's not meditation. Because you, right? I am breathing. There's no I in Buddhism. Just breathing exists. There's no, there's no person. So when you contemplate the body, just contemplate as a body. So here, body me, breathing. When you are contemplating breathing, just contemplate breathing. When you are breathing, just contemplate breathing, breathing in. When you are breathing out, just contemplate uh, breathing out. Do not think that you are breathing. Do not think that you are breathing out. So it is not a meditation. He abides contemplating the body as a body, both internally and externally. Or as he abides contemplating in the body is the nature of arising, how breathing arises. And he abides contemplating in the body is nature of 
vanishing. Very important. So when uh, breathing arises, how, uh, you just think how they arise, how they finish, how they disappear. So that is meditation. There, uh, actually the Buddha said that um, bear knowledge and mindfulness. So when you are breathing, uh, just when you are breathing in, you just know that breathing in. When you breathe out, just know that breathing out. And when uh, breathing arises, just know that, just know that, bear knowledge and bear awareness. The breathing in and breathing out, just know that breathing and breathing out, that's all. And how they arise, how they disappear. So that is the, uh, uh, how do you say, we call it insight. That is, we call it insight. So actually, uh, the aim of establishing mindfulness is to see another. There's no person. Just breathe in. The breath come in and breathe go out. And through the impermanent nature of the body, and breathing is not impermanent, it arises and passes away. Feeling, not permanent, it arises and passes away. There's no passing. When you feel pleasant feeling, just take note, bear knowledge, bear awareness, pleasant feeling. Don't think that you are feeling. You are feeling pleasant feeling. But if you miss that with your uh, identity view as I am uh, feeling, so that is a wrong view. That is a wrong view. So actually, when you meditate, you will understand so those phenomena, mental and physical phenomena, arise and pass away. There is no person. So for that reason, uh, if you study Satipatthana Soda, so you will understand that the aim of Satipatthana Soda is uh, to see another, or non self. There is no permanent entity. Breathing, feeling, the mind, and every phenomena. The arises and passes away. Just take note this one. Here, anatta means no self. No self means emptiness of a permanent entity. Sometimes we call it self, or soul, or atman, or whatever you call it. There's no I, there's no you, there's no man, no women. Just by aggregate. So according to Satipatthana Soda, just body, feeling, the mind, and phenomena. There are just body, feeling, mind, and phenomena. In other words, we can call it, there are just mental and physical phenomena, or sheer fine aggregate in this world. There's no passing, there's no dual. If you meditate, if you are staying in the present moment, you will know it. You will know it. So actually the higher knowledge in Buddhism is to see another. To see another. So to see another, just you know, thinking is not enough. We call it ataka vachara. Just thinking, you cannot understand. An ad, but you have to practice. You have to practice. If we see the body, feeling, mind, and phenomena as an ad, one no longer cling to anything in the world. For that reason, in the second discourses, another lagana soda, uh, at the end of the soda, five monks they become arahan. So this is a, the sentence or. Uh, the soda record how they became a rahan. Why did this uh, why in this discourse another Lakana Soda was being spoken? The mind of the bhikkhus of the group of five were liberated from the taints by non-clinging because they understand 
everything is impermanent, there is no permanent soul, feeling, perception, volition, formation, everything arises and passes away, then they begin to realize that there is no soul, then no clinging uh, in the five aggregate. So when, if there is no clinging, their mind we are liberated from taints or defilements. That is how they became arahant. So here, uh, the aim of satipatthana or the aim of establishing mindfulness or the aim of meditation is to see an adder. I think now we are learning about a second link. Um, uh, Volition and formation as condition, consciousness arises. So actually, understand this consciousness is very important. In Buddhism, there is no permanent consciousness. They arise and passes away. Impermanent nature. There is no such a thing as a permanent entity, like a soul, in Buddhism. So the Bora, he himself realized, and his disciple also realized that, for that reason, when Bhikkhusari talk about the same consciousness go from life to another, and the Buddha said that it's pernicious, dangerous, using a strong, strong word. Even uh, the ideal I, no? The ideal I does not exist. Think about that, you know, Chenchamana is accusing the Buddha. You know, they have an affair. Because of that, she is, she is a pregnant. You know, the Buddha said that. Chinchamana, calmly, you know, calmly. Chinchamana, in this case, only you and I know. The Buddha said very calmly. Because the Buddha do not have any idea or I, you know. Another Brahmin, Akosa Pararasa, and uh, his brother became the monk. He was angry, you know. They are Brahmin. They think that the Brahmin race is higher. Brahmin caste is higher. But his brother became the monk, outcast, became very angry, and go to the monasteries and cast the Bora using unpleasant speeches. The Buddha listened calmly, didn't say anything. But if we were at the shoot of the Buddha, huh? we'd we'll be very angry, you know? He is, you know, using unpleasant speeches. But the Buddha listened calmly, you know? Because the Buddha does not have identity view. I know. So I think uh, it's very important to have to understand a net, <clears throat> to understand a net. So this is from Wikipedia. Uh, Heraclitus from uh, from Greece. He said that ever newer water flow on those who step into the same rivers. Actually, this is very famous. <laughs> Uh, if we look at this one, very simple, but we think that the same water flow in the river, but it is not so. Plato quote this famous saying in his book called uh, Kra Kla Kra Kratiles, right? Dialogue twice. All entity move. Nothing remains still. Science agree right now. But science cannot find the consciousness, consciousness uh, moved. Consciousness uh, does not remain the same. They do not agree on that. They still believe so, right? Especially in the West, they have a soul, you know, in their mind. They always say that soul. They always use the word soul. Soul mate, right? Like this. So they always use soul. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, when I see the when I see uh, one of the documentary uh, that talk about uh, universe, and uh, one of the scientists explained that um, every entity is moving. Every entity is moving from one place to another. They do not remain the same. The same thing. The same thing. Scientists nowadays, but uh, according to Bodhisattva. They are not moving. They disappear, and new entity arises. Uh, new, how to say, new cell arises. They are not moving. They pass away. Another cell arises. So according to Bodhisattva, but this one is a, a very famous one. You cannot step twice into the uh, same stream. So that talk about impermanent nature of physical phenomena. So you cannot step twice into the same stream. So that means the water flow. So when you go in, no, not the same water. So that talk about actually we use it. We use that one uh, to talk about impermanent nature of physical phenomena. In Buddhism, not only physical phenomena, the mental phenomena, or the mind also. Does not remain the same. It rises and passes away. That is very important. That's very important. So we are meditating to see that process. That process. We always think, I, I, I. <laughs> the same body. No, not the same body. The body right now. The body next moment. Not the same. Just like that, you cannot step twice into the same stream. You cannot see the same body, the same body of other people. Everything is changing, right? It's changing. <coughs> Question. You understand anatta, non se? Okay. A little bit complicated. <laughs> Then, regarding with the consciousness, then I want to explain about consciousness of arahant after death. Normally, when we die, as we have ignorance and craving, our consciousness establish next life, next existence. That is because of ignorance and craving. How about arahant? Where does our, th their consciousness go? So actually, <clears throat> in many sodas, especially in one of the soda in uh, Majjhima Nikaya, so the Buddha you similarly or fire. So you are uh, making fire using grass and wood. Then the fire flame goes on. If there is no grass, if there is no wood, the fire, flame, uh, will disappear. But you cannot see fire go somewhere. Fire does not go anywhere. It disappear because there is no uh, fuel. Just like a grass, just like a wood. So just like that, in this soda, in Gorika soda. The Buddha explained based on that theory. So in that soda, uh, Gorika, a uh, bhikkhu Gorika, venerable Gorika, he was meditating, and he attained temporary temporary uh, jhana, temporary jhana. So the moment he is meditating, the moment he attained temporary jhana, then his disease, you know, his disease can, uh, arises. Then, because of that disease, then temporary uh, jhana fell down. Then he became very ang uh, he beca became very angry because of his disease. Maybe he he might have a uh, how to say uh, how can I say that a serious disease in his body. Because of that, temporary uh, uh, jhana fell down. Then, uh, for the sixth time. So he decided to 
commit suicide. He think that if uh, he died as a Buddha Jana, he will go around Sansara. So he went to finish Sansara. For that reason, he commits suicide using uh, the knife. Then, uh, when uh, before he died, he contemplate on his painful feeling, as a painful feeling. Then, according to uh, the soda, uh, he became arahant before he died. So that is what the Buddha said. So Mara is searching for the consciousness of Venerable Gorika. He think that after Venerable Gorika died, he, will, he might was born somewhere else. And the Buddha said that the bhikkhus, uh, that is the Mara, the evil ones, and he, uh, the, uh, the, the man see a cloud, you know, a group of cloud. And the Buddha said, that is Mara. He is searching for the consciousness of Venerable Gorika, wondering where now has the consciousness of Klinsman Gorika been established. And the Buddha said that, however, because with the consciousness and establish, the Klinsman Gorika has attained final Nepal. But here, how Aram, uh, how someone became Arahant? So if someone became Arahant, his consciousness will not establish anywhere. The reason is he does not have any ignorance and craving. With the consciousness and establish anywhere, Venerable Gorika attain final Nepal. So the Buddha used the same expression on Beku uh, Wakali death. So this is from uh, Samanyafala Soda. The Buddha talk about the, uh, the death of himself, and he said that just as bhikkhus, when the stalk of a bunch of mangoes has been cut, all the mango connected to the stalk follow along with this. So in the same way, the body of the Tagata or the body of the Buddha stands with the lash that bound, bound it to existing cat. As long as his body stands, gods and men shall see him. But with the breakup of the body, extinction of light faculty, gods and men shall not see him no man, no more. So actually here, when the Buddha passes away, no, uh, that uh, consciousness will not establish anywhere. But we cannot see where the consciousness go. Consciousness go east direction, or west direction, or up or down, cannot see. Just extinguish. Consciousness extinguish, just like you find a simile. The Buddha and Arahant, they do not have craving for existence. For that reason, when they die, consciousness asleep, uh, does not establish anywhere because of lack of ignorance and craving. But as a normal person, as we have a ignorance and craving, craving for existence or non-existence, then our consciousness establishes somewhere. That is the, uh, the difference between consciousness, arahant, and normal person. So I think uh, up to here, I hope you understand uh, the concept of a net or non-self. There is no self or permanent entity in Buddhism. Just uh, phenomena arises and passes away. Phenomena arises and passes away. So if we understand this nature, uh, Actually, only meditation, only if you establish mindfulness based on four foundations, then you will see how they arise, how they disappear.
if you know how the mind and physical phenomena arises and passes away, there, there will be no clinging, no clinging to anything. If no clinging, no craving, then there will be no suffering. The whole mass of suffering will be extinguished. That is called Nepal. Question? Any question? Okay, no question. And then, so let's close our lessons. Good night, everyone.